Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and I am picking up where we left off in the second Law of Thermo tutorial, and we're going to talk about entropy, or the measure of disorder in a system. And this topic goes hand in hand with the second Law of Thermo, and that is because it's a measure of the disorder within a system. Now, when the disorder of a system increases, that means the form of energy is no longer usable or very little can be used. So before we get into that, a couple real life examples of heat engines that use natural resources can demonstrate the concept of entropy. So an earth energy system, for example, pulls heat from a house, which would act as the heat source in the summer, and puts that into the groundwater, which acts, which acts as a heat sink. And in the winter, in colder months, the opposite is done. Using a heat exchanger, the homeowners are able to transfer heat from one uh, to the other. Other examples are solar panels, they can convert sun energy, the radiant light energy into electricity. Hybrid cars can use both gas and electricity, increasing the number of miles we can drive per gallon of gas. By using renewable natural resources, we can fulfill our needs and still be environmentally friendly, or at least slightly more environmentally friendly. And that brings us to entropy. And that's an important concept to understand because it allows us to figure out how much energy can actually be converted from one form to another. In heat engines, um, the ones we learned about earlier, we were converting thermal energy into mechanical energy. Entropy allows us to figure out how efficient the heat engine can be. Energy comes to our planet through sunlight. Light is very ordered. It's a very ordered energy form. And then as reactions occur, energy is converted to other forms. And each time that conversion takes place, less and less energy can be used for what we want. Um, most of it is given off as unusable energy in the form of heat. Heat is considered to be the lowest quality of energy. When the entropy or disorder of a system increases, it means that the quality of the energy in that system has decreased. Therefore, an increase in entropy yields a decrease in the quality of energy. In all natural processes, the entropy of the overall system increases. In closed systems, entropy either stays the same or it increases. Energy is converted into a more disordered form, which increases the overall entropy of the system. So to put it plainly, the more disordered something is, the more stable or less reactive it is. So we'll look at this phenomenon in more detail later on. But for the lesson, we're going to use this equation to calculate the entropy in a system. We need to know the change in heat and the absolute temperature of the system. And we measure absolute temperature in Kelvin. The equation we use looks like this. Delta S, which is entropy in this case, equals delta Q, which is the change in heat, divided by the absolute temperature. So change in S, change in entropy, equals change in heat, divided by absolute temperature. And it, it, uh, it says the units we use to um, represent entropy is joules per degrees Kelvin. The change in the heat of the system is in joules, 
and T is in Kelvin. So it's joules over Kelvin. And this picture shows water in a state of low entropy. So ice is very ordered. It has structure. And then as maximum entropy occurs, you get water, liquid, no structure. So think of order and entropy as opposites. Ice is very structured, has a lot of order, not a lot of entropy. A lot of entropy, no order, leaves you with no structure. So let's try practice. Let's try to practice a problem together. And we're going to solve for entropy by using this equation now. So here's a question. If a running system has a total change in heat of 545 joules, so that's our delta Q, and it's running at a temperature of 290 kelvins, 290 degree kelvins, um, that's our T, that's our absolute temperature. What is delta S entropy? So we have this equation. We know the numbers. Now we just plug everything in. Delta Q is 545 joules. Divide that by 290 Kelvin, 290 degrees Kelvin. And that equals 1.87 joules per Kevin. Kelvin, not Kevin, or J over K. So that is our entropy, 1.87 joules per Kelvin. And as we can see, entropy has been found to be that number. And let's see. Now it just wants us to, we're looking for entropy. That is delta S. And we're uh, using this equation. Delta S equals delta Q over to T. And that's entropy equals the change in heat divided by the absolute temperature. So now you just plug in the numbers. If a running system has a total change in heat, total change in heat, 325 joules, We have a temperature of 366 Kelvin. What is delta S? So using the equation, you get 0 0.88. joules per Kelvin. And you simply divide the change in heat by the absolute temperature. So you get 0 0.88. And that's really all there is to it. Now we're going to look at the statistical definition of entropy. So far, we've talked about entropy using the thermodynamic definition. But there is also a statistical definition that takes the concept of entropy one step further. So the statistical definition of entropy explains how disordered a system is and looks at it on the microscopic level. So it looks at the very small level of things, focusing on the movement of the atoms and molecules. When the entropy of a system increases, which means that it becomes more disordered, remember that, the overall system becomes more stable. All processes in nature move from a less probable state to a more probable, probable, probable state. These more probable states are referred to as favored states, and they are the ones with the greatest disorder. Here, again, is the equation for the thermodynamic theory of entropy. And here's the equation for the statistical definition of entropy, sometimes referred to as 
probabilistic entropy. So here's where that came from. In the equation for the statistical definition of entropy, we have S equals um, K times the natural log of W. So here we have S representing entropy. K is a constant, Boltzmann's constant, 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd power of joules per Kelvin. And ln equals the natural log. And w is the number of distinct microscopic physical states available to the system, giving the, ma the uh, macro macroscopic constraints, like temperature and pressure. So in this equation, we have k representing 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. This value is called the Boltzmann's constant. And that is named after the physicist who discovered it. And it represents the energy at the microscopic level. This equation defines entropy as the natural logarithm of W. W is the number of distinct microscopic states available to the system given the macroscopic constraints multiplied all by the Boltzmann's constant. So this equation relates the micro parts of the system through W to the macro level of the systems through S. Okay. And we can use this to find um, the statistical definition of entropy in any system. So we have W equals two. And that's really all we need to know to uh, use this equation. You can just plug it in because K is the 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per degree Kelvin. And if we substitute in the values, K equals that. And in the problem, it says W equals two. So that is the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of two. And you will find that to equal 9.56 times 10 to the negative 24. So the negative 24th power joules per degree Kelvin. And now we're gonna walk through it step-by-step step again. So now we're looking for the statistical definition of entropy, that's S. And then we're going to use this equation, entropy equals the Boltzmann constant K times the natural log of W. And we know the Boltzmann constant K equals 1.38 times. Ten to the negative twenty third. And then we're told that W equals three. So the Boltzmann constant times actually. So that'll be the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of three. Yay. And if you calculate that out, that's 1.516 times 10 to the negative 23rd power joules per degree Kelvin. Okay, so summarize everything. The lesson dealt with the second law of thermo, which states that no heat engine can convert all of the heat input into usable work energy. Heat engines are devices that convert thermal energy 
into other useful forms like electrical or mechanical energy. Heat from a hot reservoir cools and flows into a cold reservoir. In the process, some of the thermal energy is converted into useful energy and can therefore do work. Some common heat engines you know are car engines, diesel engines, and steam engines. In terms of thermodynamics, work is the amount of energy transferred from one system to another. It can be calculated by taking the difference between the heat going into the heat engine and the heat coming out. We use the different, or we use the following equation to solve for work. So that is the difference between the input energy and the outcoming energy of the reservoirs. And that equals the work. So what, what uh, is coming in minus what is coming out is able to use to be used for useful work. And we learned about the French engineer, Carnot. Uh, he came up with a hypothetical heat engine that converted all the thermal energy to mechanical work and is 100% uh, efficient. This is the idealized um, measuring stick of an engine. All existing heat engines are now compared to that engine to figure out how efficient they are. To calculate efficiency, we use this equation, okay? Use that last video. And then in this section, we talked about entropy. That is a, a measure of disorder in a system. The entropy of the overall system always increases. The higher the, entr the entropy, the more disordered the system is and more stable. We use entropy to calculate the transfer of energy from one form into another. To do this calculation, we use the thermodynamic equation. And we need to know the change in heat and the absolute temperature of the system. So here is the thermodynamic definition of entropy and how to find it. And there is another way to find entropy. And this is dealing with the statistical or probabilistic model. And this is at the microscopic level. It ties really small microscopic activity to the macroscopic, the large scale of the system. And to calculate that, use this equation. Entropy equals the Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W. In this lesson, we cover the second law. We study what heat engines do, how they work, how to calculate their work, what entropy is, how to calculate it using thermo and statistical definitions of entropy. And that is that. So congratulations on getting through the second law of thermo tutorial and best of luck. I will go through the mastery test later too. Um, and that should be fine. And I will upload that later. But until then, best of luck and enjoy the rest of your day slash week. See you next time. Bye-bye.